Blah. <laughs> when was the first time you were exposed to punk rock? And do you remember the shift of, of you talked about, you know, loving that metal stuff. And were you, you know, obviously I, I would imagine that like maybe like Alice Cooper and Ted Nugent and that stuff obviously must have come first. And then at some point you get exposed to punk rock. Talk a little bit about that. I think the, I was, my best friend was this guy, Drew Bernstein, and he lived with me in the Hollywood Hills and we were skaters and, um, and we would start going to like punk rock shows. I remember the first show we went to, we saw the Ramones at UCLA. And then we said, Hey, there's this place, the Cafe de Grand and it's Halloween. Let's go see what, and we're like young kids, you know? And we went there and it was black flag with Keith singing and the germs and fear and all these like incredible bands. And it was just so mind blowing because if, if, if you're a rebellious skate skater, you know, you want something that's a little bit different. And, and we just, we felt like this is dangerous. This is so wrong. And then we started going to more and more shows and got more and more entrenched in the scene. Um, Drew ended up starting a, a company called Lip Service, which was a huge clothing company. And he was very, very deep into the punk rock scene. And um, we were just going to shows together. And then I became, made friends with other bands. And, and there's still a couple people you know, from bands that I, that I still talk to once in a while. And, you know, if I have the opportunity, I'll always go see, you know, if I, if I go see TSOL play, you know, I sit there cause I know the words to every single song. I can't remember what I did last month, but dance with me. I know the words to every single song on that album. I, um, I am particularly a huge TSOL fan. And I start the first time I ever saw him was CBGB's 2005 and every time they come to the east coast or i I'm, I'm at every show i try to go to every show and um i'm very curious to know how do you feel about the trigger complex um i know that a lot of their fans were a lot of their hardcore fan base was not with it um and so it seems to be a very polarizing record i, I don't know if you've listened to it much i'm a big jack grisham fan okay and I think Jack is incredible. And as far as, I hope he watches this show so he knows what a fan I am of him. Cause I, as a person, I really like Jack a lot as well. Um, and Jack's been in a lot of different bands. He was in a band called Joy, Joy Killers. Killer. Yep. Is just great band. Awesome. Should that have first, been huge. That first Should've record been. is secretly oh, a TSOL God. record in a way. If you listen to that first record, oh, it's no. very, yeah, no. Okay. But hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. What was the first um, I think it's self-titled, but hear me out. It's not early TSOL. It right. sounds very much, it ha shares a lot of DNA with Disappear, with Divided We Stand, and with the Trigger Complex. Those records, and, and maybe uh, in, in uh, Life, Life, Death, and Pursuit of uh, Free Downloads, which was that free album they did for Hurley. But um, right. it's, there's a lot, and Ron plays guitar on it. It's not, obviously, it's not, it doesn't have Mike on it, and it doesn't have Todd on it, but, uh, or Greg, but it, there's a lot of DNA with, with like uh, later TSOL with Jack back in the band. Jack isn't, I mean, Jack has done stuff like, you know, like very, like he's put out, Jack Gershom wants to be, okay. He's, he would like me saying this. Jack Gershom wants to be Brian Ferry. Okay. That's who he wants to be. I think if you could ask him, who would you want to be? He'd want to be Brian Ferry. And he could do that because he is a bit of a crooner and he's got. Very much know, so. Romantic music and mm -hmm. smooth music but he you know it's like if you put out the same record for decades you're stale and there's nothing wrong in changing um was trigger he's a seeker he's a seeker was, yes was that the album that had the um the cover of that like r&b song there's just one thing that keeps me no that was a single that they just put out digitally and they did a seven inch for so good i Love couldn't stop too. It stuck in my head and now it's gonna be stuck in my yeah. head again and it was not TSOL. It was a, a cover Have version of Have you listened to the demo? No. Have you listened to They did a demo in 2005 when they had uh, uh, Tiny on, when they first got Tiny on drums. They did a demo. Um, it was four songs. They did a cover of Lou Reed's Perfect Day. They did a cover of Politics by The Damned. I think I did hear it because I knew Tiny. I know Tiny very well, so I probably heard it. 
he he was a great man. He was a he was really bedrock drummer for them for many years. Yeah, I, I, I I like Tiny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, their new guy is good too. I like uh, Antonio. He he's a solid. He's a solid uh, player as well. I haven't but, seen you know, him for several years, but I sure want him. Um, Trigger Complex is the one where it's like I think there's a gun on the cover. It's just it's the latest record they did, and uh, it's just got some great music. And you know it, what you're talking about about like not wanting to do the same stale record. Those guys are searching, man. They're just like searching for their sound. They're just they're trying new things and. You know, and I feel like they got a lot of they got a lot of flack from like people like, oh, it's not like the self titled LP. The same thing happened. You could say the same thing about Bad Religion, and I go see Bad Religion all the time, and their albums are so different, and the songs are so good. I mean, I like it. I don't like it if I heard something. I'm not going to put shade on any bands. But there's some bands that have done things that were obviously, you know, a money grab that they wanted to do this because they wanted to attract new fans. And I think there's also bands that like to do stuff just because they want to do new stuff. I don't think they try to record something to be huge. The last thing I heard from TSOL was him doing Sweet Transvestite. Yes, with Keith Morris as Brad. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, See, I think, I, I mean, I would, I could totally see Jack playing Frankenfooter on the stage. Yeah great would that be great the best that would be the best and oh. you know what i i commented that on facebook and he hearted that he hearted that comment and i think that you know and that guy is like off he's doing the movie right now the movie's coming out very excited for that the ignore heroes documentary um if if somehow that manifested i would be very happy i would love to see that happen it'd just be good He's yeah, wonder, uh, I should ask Jack why I'm not. In, I'd like to be in that documentary. That band is so important to me. To oh man, I, it, it's it's in the can. I think. I, well, here's the thing. He was very specific. He just wanted to interview the members of the band and not anybody, not Joe Wood, not Mitch, not anybody who came afterwards. It was just about TSL yeah, I mean, from their the perspective. Truth is, the truth is, um, even though I'm a Jack guy, but the truth is probably the biggest song they ever had was with, was with Joe Wood and with Mitch. I mean, that Which was song? The nothing name for is, you. The name, name is love. Oh, I don't even know if I, is that, that must be on, is that's not on change today? Is it? They were on headbangers ball. Yeah, I know. I know that. I mean, they were opening for guns and roses. Yeah. They were like, that was big. Yeah. I mean, that was a great rock band. I wish it wasn't called TSOL because I think Same. Joe was, and it would have been, same. there's a lot of bands that have put out records that I just wish it wasn't there. I wish Chinese Democracy was the Axel solo record. It would have been huge. You know, it would have been even better because it was it was it was so good. But um, it's brand, it's brand confusion. That's what it comes down to. It just creates brand confusion. And what happens inevitably is you get people making comparisons. No one should be comparing Joe Wood and Jack Grisham. It should just be two no, separate I mean, bands. It's like, two separate things. It's real. I mean, even when when Dio went into Sabbath, it would it, it was totally different, but it was still Sabbath. But Joe Wood and and TSOL was like ACDC. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that first record is still very got it's very gothic uh change today, but then yeah, it yes. just after very that it just gothic. it's very new romantic gothic. In fact, I saw shows. I was, you know, I was going down the YouTube rabbit hole, and they were still, you know, they had dropped all the songs, the all the all the original material, and the only song that they had carried over from Jack when Jack was still singing was Silent Scream. So it's Joe Wood doing Silent Scream, and his version is very interesting. It's a very good adaptation. It's different. Um, again, it's kind of you know, I've always like liking these sort of things to like. Joy Division and New Order. It's like you lose the guy, you change the name. And New Order has respect and legitimacy in everything that it does. No one's going, well, you know, they're just trying to cash in on being Joy Division. Nobody thinks that. Nobody thinks that. And the problem is bands, it, uh, you know this business better than anybody, right? It, it, it all comes down to, to the name of the band, you know, is going to get you a certain type of guarantee. And, you know, it's good for record deals. It's the same thing happened with Christian Dad. Nine, call ourselves Christian Death, and that creates the same problem that happened with TSOL. It happened with the Misfits. It just it this always happens, and I don't know. It just comes down to that stuff. 
when when Michael Graves sang for the Misfits, I was so like, I ain't gonna listen to this band. This is stupid. I'm not gonna listen to some other guys. <laughs> then I listened to it. I was like, it's not so bad. It's kind of good, you know. But it wasn't it, Misfits because to me, Glenn is a Misfit. Uh, say agree, 100 agree on that. And I want to ask you about Danzig a little later on, but um. Yeah, it's just like that. Those albums are bittersweet because it's just, under any other name, it would just be yeah, that's great for what it is. It just sucks when it's like, oh, that's Misfits, but this is Misfits. This is not Misfits. This is Misfits. Even though I'm you know? such a big Jack Grisham fan. Um, it was TSO. No, actually, you know what? I had TSOL with um, Joe played the Cat House many times, but Tender Fury. Right, played, that's his right. Tender Fury played with Jack, and I think Jack might have played with other bands. For all I know, Cathedral maybe, of Tears. I don't know if it was Cathedral of Tears, but it was other bands that that, that I think he they played with at Cat House. Wow. Um, so you really got to see. So did you go to you went to clubs like the Mask and stuff when it was like Mask once, yeah. um, Madame Monks, Cafe de Grand, Godzilla. Wow. Um, Fleetwood, Starwood, uh, yeah. You man, what a what a slice, man! A slice of of history that you got to uh, witness. 